going to talk about the Turkish coffee, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of the history of it, and a little bit about the, the culture of it, and the, the social aspect of it. And then we're going to, my son's here, Erhan, is going to teach you how to do it. Of course, there's too many of you, so we're not going to be able to, everyone's not going to be able to see it. But uh, you're going to come to our booth and, and just have a sample, okay, later on after the show, if you haven't done so already. All right, so. I would say. Uh, and look, even Hillary's having it. And it's a trend. So it's, it's a new thing. And they don't sell this kind of coffee at AMPM, 7 Eleven, you know, none of those stores. So, so it's something new. And, uh, and, 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 and I think it's exciting that people are, you know, once they find out about it, they sort of like there's really no going back to your old way of having coffee, basically. Uh, just to start with a little bit of history, uh, there's different variations in this history, but I just want to give you a little bit of basic background. Uh, in Ethiopia, the, 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 the shepherds uh, realized that when the goats eat the coffee beans, they get a little hyper. And so they thought, hey, this gives them energy. So they would then spread on a bread and eat it. Okay, make a paste out of it, and they would do it that way. And then the Yemenis saw that this just keeps them awake. And so they started they, they just to boil the beans, and because they thought that they could stay up all night and pray. And so that's why the, the men, they started using this thing to stay up and pray all night. And, um, and, what, and the next is the, 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 uh, the, 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 the this, this drink, started, the, the Sultan in Istanbul heard about it, and he found out about it, let's, let's have this thing come to Istanbul to the palace, you know, that's where the Ottomans are. And, uh, and then they started to experiment, just not anything else. Uh, the Ottoman, the, the best cooks, best anything would come to the, to the Sultan's place because that's where you're going to impress them, become famous and all that, right? And so they started doing it. And what they did in Istanbul is that they actually pulverized them. They take the ground beans, made it into a powder. If you ever seen some of our machines back there, it's like a top of powder, right? It's just not like a powder. Why? We're going to talk about that a little bit later and what the reason for that is. Uh, and what really makes Turkish coffee Turkish coffee is the ground. That's it. They don't grow coffee in Turkey. <laughs> Every coffee in, a in Turkey has to be imported. So, the passing, so the first coffee shop uh, was established in 1457. And, uh, and in a coffee baron in, in Germany in 1694. And the spread of the Turkish coffee is due to the Ottoman Empire, and that's why you see so many different variations of it. There was about 400, 40, 40 countries that was created out of the Ottoman Empire in World War I. Uh, they, 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 they lost the war, so the whole empire was dissolved, basically. Uh, and this is the, 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 in Germany, and this is museum. This is a museum now. It actually is still. You can see the Sultan there giving the the Cupid a, a coffee, and that was built in 1694. Yeah. Okay. So, what happened then? Well, once the once whatever Sultan does in Istanbul Palace, the whole city, everywhere, the empire wants to emulate it. If it was, is there, in, in fact, there are some dishes that are called Sultan Lightened. That's the name of the dish. <laughs> and so the coffee is spread. And all of a sudden, people are doing some service thing at their home, invite their relatives over, and it just became a fad. It, it just that it, was, it became it was a way to socialize. No internet, no radio, no TV. And so this was the way to people got together and they conversed. Okay which is what we need to do more of. Uh, and actually, women could divorce a, 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 a husband if he can't provide enough coffee for her. It was actually, that was the law. But and, and, and later on, the Sultan actually outlawed coffee because they said that these people are gathering around the coffee houses and they're talking politics. So he didn't want that, so they, they made it illegal 
for a while. <laughs> and then now later we came back. Uh, so, and this is a, a Turkish coffee shop that I was in uh, Turkey a couple of months ago. And this is just a one corner of a neighborhood. And the first one is the one separate shop. That's a separate shop, okay? This one across the street is another shop. There's one next to that one, and there's one next to it over there. It's like a five, six in one area. And I want you to notice that this is 9.30 p.m. <laughs> All right? So they, they don't drink coffee till like 11 o'clock, you know? And the coffee shops are open, and, and you can just go in and just have coffee. It's just a, it's a thing. And interestingly enough, Turks also drink there's more, uh, more capital tea consumed in Turkey than anywhere else in the world. So they don't just drink coffee, they also drink tea. Coffee tea, coffee tea, just, you know, <laughs> the country of, you know, caffeine addicts, I think. But it, it's really, it's interesting, you go there, and you know, 9, 30, 10, there's coffee shops full of people. Uh, this is the, you know, that's how they, they also have these carts. Every coffee shop will pull out these things. By the way, this is not the only way. Okay, there are hundreds of Starbucks. Gym, gym, whatever. Like, every kind of American coffee shop you can think of is also there. But, they are, you know, they sell, they don't, they, the Starbucks sells Turkish coffee in Turkey. They do. Uh, but, it's, it's, uh, you know, where you go and this kind of, they don't do this in Starbucks, right? They, they'll be illegal. You can't learn a, you know, coals and stuff. Uh, so, the, the, the neighborhood coffee shop is really where they cook it on the sand or you know, charcoal like that, where you really get the, the real flavor of the, of the coffee. And it's just custom made, each one. Okay, so another coffee shop. This one, I actually been into this one. This, is, uh, this, this shop was built in 1635. And I actually had a coffee, that's my wife there sitting there in the back, second floor. And we actually had a, 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 a coffee there. And they also had this different kind of coffee there. It is, uh, they, what they do is they take the pistachio seed and turn it into a paste. And then they mix that with the coffee. And it's something else. The, the, the whole thing is like a coffee and pistachio, but you're not sure which one it is. Like, and you get both of those flavors, but it's really, really delicious. And I sell those sometimes on my website, and as soon as I get it, they're gone. And they're not easy to import things from food these days because of the, all the homeland and all that stuff. All right, so, but it's a really nice shop. What makes it so special, right? I mean, that's, that's one thing. I always said, you know, it, it's, there's lots of coffee types here, every time you can think of, right? But what makes this one so different, right? Why is it different? Well, it's the world's oldest coffee method for one, but it remains on the palate longer than any other type of coffee because it's not filtered, right? You're actually, there's no filtration, you're not um, uh, taking the water and dripping through it, you're not taking the steam running through it, you're actually cooking it inside your pot, right? So the, 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 your tongue, your palate, they, they take all the flavors in there and stays in your mouth for a long time. Uh, it is thick and syrupy because, again, it's not filtered. So it's, uh, it's you're getting the actual coffee and, and it's closest to, the, to the, the actual flavor. And probably the most important is this, which is that in a Turkish coffee ground, you get 45,000 particles to, from a one bean, one bean. And that's versus a drip coffee at 100 or espresso at 3,000. So you're extracting more flavors per bean. Okay, so 40, 45,000 different particles. Each one is in the water, so you're taking it out. Uh, the second important part of it is the only method that where you are roasting the coffee the second time. The, the coffee has been roasted at the coffee shop, right? And that's another pet peeve of mine that in America, we don't care about when it was roasted. When in reality, coffee is only good for about a week after it was roasted. That's when it's complex, that's when it's like wine. It's very complex flavors, and then, if, and then it's like grapes. The coffee flavor, is, you never can get the same flavor from the same tree, because it depends on the moisture in the air, what height, latitude, how much rain it rained that year. So every time, you're getting a different flavor out of that beans from those trees. 
And the only way that that, that would be reflected is that if we had that coffee right after it was roasted. That's when it's the most complex. So right now, we go to the grocery store and get a coffee that was roasted three months ago, and no expiration date, no brew date. When was it roasted? It's not on there. We don't know. It could have been six months ago. So we're drinking coffee that is not fresh, for one. The only way you can have a fresh coffee is if you go to the roaster and then, and then buy something that was roasted within a week or so, or two weeks. In Turkey, nobody buys a coffee by the pound. That'd be like ridiculous. They buy it for every two, three days. We buy 50 grams, 100 grams, 150 grams, just enough to serve it for the next two, three days. And then you buy a new one, a new one. And people will wait in line just to buy the coffee that their favorite coffee is roasted. And that's, that's, it's all about the flavors. It's all about the, the taste. And that's why you don't need to put creams and sugars and all that other stuff in it. And most coffee enthusiasts will just have a no sugar. In fact, most people in Turkey are saying they have it with no uh, sugar in it. Because it's all about the taste. Uh, yeah, I just mentioned that. Okay, the, it's, it's not this, it's, it's served in a small porcelain cups. And the porcelain is very thin cups, so that it stays hot. It's not like espresso where you just chug it. You can use a cup that is really thick. It's, it's not really important that you, yeah, because this is great to sip at a time. So the idea is to sit down and then have a sip at a time and then talk to someone, converse. That's what sit about, okay? If you don't have any friends, then you make coffee in a small pot like this. And if you have friends, then you use a bigger one, okay? Um, it's also economical. You, you, you will never make a huge big pot and then drink whatever you drink and then throw the rest in the sink. You only use enough coffee to make it for yourself. You don't, you don't have to, you know, make a bottle. I mean, I used to do that. I used to just get up in the morning going, one big pot. Should I make a 10 cup? No, no, do a 12 cup. In case, I might need more. So you make this pot, you drink about eight cups, and you throw the rest of the sink. So this is, you know, it's economical in that sense. You only use it enough as what you need. And because it's not filtered, you don't have to use as much. Okay, here's the most important part of Turkish coffee. Really, everything I said today about flavor and all that is true. But that's not what's it about. What's it about is that it forces you to stop. Right? You can't put a straw in it. You can't like have a big handle and just go around and talk to this person, that one, and get in a car with it. You can't do that. You have to stop. The world of time has stopped. And if you're gonna do your own, which you almost have to since you can't get it from AM PM. So what you're gonna have to set a time aside to make the coffee. And enough for hour or two words. You can't, it's not about it's a small cup. So one cup on average is about 75 milligrams of coffee caffeine. Whereas you go to Starbucks, it's like 500 milligrams. You got a uh, big dose of it. This is meant to be drank throughout the day. A couple hours there, a couple hours there, another one, and so forth. So it's spread. One of the most popular things is to have it after dinner. Now you would never do that in America. You would not take make a coffee after dinner. I can't sleep. Well, these are smaller doses, but it just goes all day and it helps in digestion because it's not filtered. So you get the full health benefits of coffee. I had a heart attack 12 years ago. And all those people say it's not healthy for you. Well, only I drink like five, six of these a day. And I've been there for 12 years. And it's, it's good for you. It really is. It helps you with the digestive anti-carcinogenic, believe it or not. The, when you filter it, you don't get all the benefits of the coffee bean. And while the, when this is inside the coffee bean, you actually do benefits of the plant called cup coffee. So uh, it's, it's a, uh, I gotta drink some water. It's nothing I, uh, okay. Uh, and it's about, it's about, it's about sharing. It's a very important part. And it's kind of funny. To sit at a table, make a coffee for one cup, one person, and then sit down and sip it. It's, it just doesn't, it's, you know, it's not, it doesn't fit. So it's about having it with somebody else. So you, it's about having it with a friend, 
I can't walk too much here because there's cables running everywhere. Uh, but it's about that. It's about sharing it. And so you want to sit down and invite somebody, and you want to, to, to have this thing together. And we have a, pro, a, pro, a, a proverb that says, memory of sharing a cup of coffee will last for 40 years. And so when somebody asks you for a coffee, you can't turn it down. That's like saying, hey, I don't want to be your friend for 40 years. Right? It's, you can't, it's not going to work. So you're pretty much obligated to oblige to um, share it. And you will get people asking you for coffee all the time. And then you just want to almost like to do it. You know, it's, it's rude not to. Um, so anyways, um, let me go to the next slide here. Here's my other thing that we need to correct it in, in America. Uh, it's the name. What's the name of this coffee pot? This. What is it called? Well, most people say Ibri. It, the, the Ibrik though is, uh, is, is also they will say Jezdeh in or the variation of from Croatia, Bosnia, Russia, Greece. No, not Greece, sorry, not the Greece. Greeks call it Ibrik and they came to the English speaking countries first, so that's where the name Ibrik comes from. But it's the wrong word for it, and I'm going to explain to you why. Uh, Ibrik is a Persian word. So it's not Turkish word, I'm not trying to make you all say it in Turkish or anything. So it's a, it's a Persian word. And it's, it's, it's an Ottoman pronunciation of these things that are to carry water with. You know, you put your water, you wash your feet, or what, or whatever else. And it, it also means toilet in Persian. And there's an imprint in every toilet in the Middle East. That's, that's it. And you know, whatever you use, right? So that's what it is. And this is what it looks like. Okay, that's an Ibrik. So when you say that Ibrik, that just doesn't go there. Okay? Now, the Jezda, which is not the Jezda, which is not Turkish either, okay, it's not Turkish, it's Arabic. And but it means a device or, or a pot that is used to cook on a stove or on a sand or a, a, a coal, that kind of thing. So appropriateness for the name is really should be Jezda, but we have, we say, just call it Turkish coffee pot or bacon, okay? That's what we prefer to call it. Here we are, everybody understands what it is. So this way, that's what it is, and it's, it's in English. All right. Um, this is another critical part of how to make Turkish coffee, which is where the area that is confusing the people. It's the, it's the picking the correct size of the pot. In America, everybody says, give me the biggest one you got. Well, no, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's not about the size, it's about the right proportion, okay? So, if you have one out of the ring, one cup, and we're talking about small limit test cups, you then get a smallest one, like this. Okay, it's for one person. It also means you have no friends, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, if you want to do more, then you get different sizes. And it is okay to have two, three different sizes so that you can have it for a couple, or you can have it for when you got friends over, and that kind of stuff. And that's really what it is, that the, the pink size. And we go by ounces because normally it's about three ounces or so per cup, okay? So this is, this is on my website. So if you don't remember all this name, just go to my website and you'll see that what, how to choose your coffee pot. Okay, because it's the key. Because we use a big pot to make a small one, the water is going to evaporate. Okay, so you're not going to have any foam. And the foam is a very important part of making Turkish coffee because that's the crema. And you've got to have a crema, otherwise people will say, you didn't spend enough time making this. It's a, you, did it too, you, know, you didn't put enough effort into it. So you have to have a crema with this. Some people don't, but I, I don't agree with it. That's not true. Okay, let's do this. Now, uh, my soul, you don't need to use anything else but the cup you're going to use to make your coffee. Okay? Uh, add the coffee, okay? Uh, right now, you, you have some water in there. You have water and you can measure that you did. So, you, and that, that heaping spoon is about what they could do in Turkey. 
it, it's, they called it a spoon, one spoon. <laughs> but you can't just use a tablespoon. That's what, what I use. And we have one of these things that some, they're available that you can just use one tablespoon. Uh, add the sugar if you want to. You don't have to use it, but you can. And then uh, a lot of coffee should put it dissolve. You want to you want to wait a little bit before it dissolves a little bit because the water is a little bit warmer and the sugar will dissolve easier. And the coffee, since it's like a powder, it won't clump up. So you want to put the coffee, uh, the sugar. Before you start to stir it, let it, let the water get a little bit warm. And we're talking about low heat, lowest one your stove will, will do. Okay, stirring is only once. You only do it once because if you do it later on, all the particles gonna stir up into the into the, into the pot. So you're gonna do it once. Do it good enough. You can stir it as much as you want, but just do it once and then let it go. Because then you're going into the phase of Anticipation and patience. It is about, it's about being patient. You know, I had a heart attack uh, 12, 13 years ago. And I actually, you know, I would get these cravings right after I eat. And I'm, I'm a drummer, so, you know, I gotta do something with my hands. And I you know, said, you know, how do I quit this ridiculous thing? So I told my mom, I said, Mom, send me a coffee mom. So after a meal, I would sit there and make my own coffee so you concentrate, you look in there. Because if you don't, if you don't look into the foam, it's gonna spill all over your stove. Right? So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta concentrate and see this foam as it's rising slowly. You watch it. There is no scientific way of doing this. Thing. It's not a machine. So you're doing an actual cooking. So you gotta pay attention to what you're doing. And that's the meditation. It really takes you to concentration of focusing on that pot and this little thing, I want to make sure it doesn't spill all over the place, right? And we will wipe and chew it out. So it's, 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 I started that way. So there's this, you know, it's almost like, I would just call it like a meditation part of it. It just sort of, you sit there anticipating something's gonna happen, you're gonna sit down and there's a period of rest that's gonna happen. You know, like a few minutes later, you're gonna sit down, so you're watching this thing. So all of a sudden, you're just involved in this process. You know, it's not like a pushing a button. And so but we do have machines that we can push a button too. Though. That's a different story. Uh, but they, that's really is what this other part of this thing is. That what I actually quit smoking by doing this after meals. And my kids put it up to some medical magazines, and they publish a bunch of stuff about it, about how I quit smoking. By, by after I had no idea I was going to do that. At the time, I quit my job because I didn't want to, you know, I had a heart attack. I'm not going to do the same job. So I had to, you know, I'm looking for something to do. And I said, you know what, why not sell this stuff? <laughs> you know, that's how I got into coffee business. <laughs> Nothing, <laughs> that's how I got into coffee business. By having a heart attack, which is the best thing ever happened. All right. Uh, oh, here we are, stirred. Okay, so, so now they allow it to rise, right, slowly. Okay, so the name of the game is slowly. The slower it is, the more extraction you're going to do and the more foamy the coffee is going to be. If you turn the heat up, which, you know, we're impatient, sometimes you do. You go, ah, I'm not going to wait. Fine, it wasn't, but to do it right, you really should let it do it slowly. And you should uh, watch it, concentrate, and then uh, and then have a, that crema extracted into the coffee. Because you really get the good total flavors. And then, you let it settle 20, 30 seconds or so. Most coffee roasters will tell you that the coffee tastes better if you just let it cool down a little bit, you know, not just grab it out of the machine and use it. So it's good that just let it cool down a little bit, let it settle, whatever it needs to settle, it settles down. And then you sit there and you sip it away, okay? And here's some of the mistakes when making the Turkish coffee. It's the wrong proportion of coffee to water, okay? It's really just use your cup as the measuring cup, and then you'll be fine. And then make sure you have the right proportion. If you put one cup of water here, and then it's three ounces of water in here, this is never gonna fall. Because it's gonna evaporate, it's too big, the surface is big. It's not gonna, these, these shapes are not accidental, by the way. It's the design to squeeze out that foam. So when you have that, 
water level right here, that's never going to squeeze anything out. Whereas the small ones, it will. Water probably come to here. Plus the coffee is probably like that. And then you have room for a phone. You see? So you got to get the right size pot is the key to this thing. Uh, using their own grind time. I mean, I see people go, you need to touch my coffee? No, no, I have my own grind. But what kind is it? You know, it's, I bought it in Walmart. It's, it's, you know, those blades that spins like that. That's not going to make Turkish coffee. It's not that, okay? It has to be like a powder. If it's not like a powder, it'll be some other kind of coffee, but you're not going to have the flavors. And it's, you need to have a, a grinder that just does that, or better yet, uh, buy it already ground. Okay, there's lots of people. They're not the only ones selling Turkish coffee. It's out there, and buy it already ground, because the grinders at the grocery stores are horrible, okay? Not for Turkish wine, maybe for something else, but if you try to do the Turkish wine on the ones in stores, they're just, they're just too, they're too granular. They're, they're not good enough. I'd sell sometimes, you know, put it again and run it again. Still, it doesn't really do a good job. It has to be like a powder. Believe me, there's a difference. Um, adding sugar after, after it's done. I don't really need to explain, but people do it. You know, so they, you know, hot water. Yeah, and this is the other thing that what they do is they actually heat the water first, and then they put the coffee in it. Well, that's not Turkish coffee because you're not roasting it. You're just, I don't know what that is, but that's not what it is. It will never fall. And so that you can't just take a shortcut out of that cooking process. <coughs> the other thing is that pouring the coffee, you, you got to do a little wrist action because the foam will go in the back of the pot, right? If you don't do it right. So you're going to kick that foam in to the pot, I mean to the cup first. Little jerk practice. <coughs> so get the foam into the cup at first. If you're making a big pot and you, you won't be able to do it, so you can spoon it out. Put a little spoon so that everybody... The trick is... Not the trick, the custom is that everyone gets the same amount of foam. You can't have, you know, more foam than her and she doesn't have any foam. No, 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 you can't do that. So, the, if, if there's a five people, everybody has to get the right amount of the foam. So sometimes you can't do that with a big pot, so you can split it out into the cups first, and then pour the rest of the coffee, okay? Uh, it's a rule. Not letting the coffee sit up, yeah. And then this other thing, you don't need to just drink it right away. And the lastly, the, to enjoy it, that's what this is about. It's a, it's a period of time in a day for you to rest. And take a break, right? Get your mind off things, whatever you want to do. We, we, what, we, what do we do in America though? We, we, we drink coffee while we work. While we work. Well, that's not taking a break from the coffee, but it's called coffee break. Where do you go? I'm going to coffee break. No, you're not. <laughs> it's not a break. Break is just stop. Uh, the other thing that we don't do in America is that the, we need to demand more of the roasting of the coffee we buy. Coffee is not cheap. You know, 40, 50 bucks a pound. So you gotta get the coffee, and, and, and it's, it's a shame that we buy something for 15 bucks. We don't even know when it was roasted. So that's one of my proponents that things that I do is that I want America to have coffee. When you go to buy coffee, it's gotta have a roast date on it. That's it. Uh, all right, that's all I have right now. So I'm gonna turn it over to my son, and he's gonna show.